I've got a brand new tool for you, you cheeky monkey. So Gatsby is a tool that's now on my radar because it says it's gonna elevate my research papers ooh, with Gatsby, Advanced AI for Academic Writing. Now, this is gonna ruffle some feathers because this is the first AI tool that I've tested that offers writing of full academic papers from your data. So we'll be checking that out in a minute. And uh, let me just tell you that it's got some good bits and some bad bits, but overall I'm very impressed with it. And I think you will be too. So when you head over to Gatsby, this is what it looks like. But ultimately, the one thing that I think um, is really important is that we download Gatsby to our actual desktop or laptop. Now, I like that because then we don't have to worry about this weird like web interface that sometimes with other AI tools ends up crashing. Uh, there is a web version which is in beta um, and you can actually use a free live demo. But be careful because if you use the free demo version, they can actually keep your data. So if data security is important to you, don't use the free trial version. Make sure that you actually pay for it and then you get a few more protections about uh, data being deleted and that sort of stuff. Now let's get straight into it. So Gatsby looks like this when you download it onto your computer and you've got this very simple interface, Gatsby Innovator. You click here, you've got Innovator, Writer and Reviewer. So Innovator, generate novel ideas. Gatsby Writer, write based on your prior research and then Gatsby Reviewer, write literature reviews and meta-analysis. So those are the things that AI excels at and this is specifically for academics. So does it do better than something like ChatGPT or even uh, Manus AI and those sort of tools that I really like. So this is what happens when you go to Innovator. It says, hi, I'm Gatsby. Hello, Gatsby. I can assist you with your technical innovation. And then when you, when you sort of sign up, you get this. So let me show you, you get to put in your sort of like research interest. So here I put OPV devices, nanocomposite electrodes and transparent electrodes. Here is where you can put as many sort of things that make sense for your research area. And then when you head over to Innovator, let's go to home, then these um, suggestions are based on the things you put in. Try to keep it nice and specific because in my experience, if you've got something like that's a little bit out of your field, it will try to squeeze it into this and sometimes it doesn't make sense. But this is what it says. Okay, Prof Sky integrated OPV, self-healing nanocomposite, graphene material. Yeah, so you can click on any one of these and I did this earlier so we don't have to wait. It does take a long time to generate these things and you'll see why. So I put in nanocomposite opposite OPV devices, then it said, okay, I understood that's what you mean, but it's not good enough for me, Gatsby said. All right, Gatsby, calm down, calm down. We're all here to have fun, aren't we? And there it says, here are some cutting edge research topics related to the system. Which one did I actually sort of like want to know about? And I clicked this one, the ternary blend nanocomposite, and then it went away and it did its analysis. So this is innovator. Remember, this is coming up with new ideas. Let's see how well it did. Here we've got the primary analysis. So here it says, I'll start by analyzing the situation to pinpoint the main issue and explore potential solutions. Remember, this is quite a broad area. So I wasn't quite sure how it was going to do, but here we go. Primary analysis. This is all the stuff that it found. Um, and it says here, look, this is the ternary blend nanocomposite used in, uh, you know, typical devices. Then we've got critical subcomponents. So it really understands the sort of like field just from those very simple sort of like three words that I put in there. So it's obviously doing its deep research, which I love. And here we've got component analysis. So here are the components of OPV devices it thinks we could work with. We've got non-fullerene acceptors. And then this is the first time I've seen these sort of chemical equations in an AI tool that makes absolute sense for the topic that I'm researching. So here we can see that it's got even the CH3 plus NH3 plus 3 methyl ammonium. So it really has used the sort of like, I don't know, right formatting. It gives me confidence from the get-go that this is going to be a cool tool. And then we've got uh, alloys like acceptors and then functional analysis of OPV devices and it goes through all of that. But ultimately, these are the things that it thinks I should be focusing on if I want to generate new research and publish that eventually. So here we've got asymmetric side chain engineering for ternary third components. And then it's like, mm, recommendation, I like this. 
the idea is less practical in addressing the problems. It's given itself three stars out of five, but it has got these references down here up to nine, and we can copy all of this. So these are the ideas, asymmetric side chaining, and then we've got kinetically controlled ligand exchange, and then we've also got clustered side chain for NFA ternary. And then we can expand this and ask it sort of like for more information, it will go away and do that. Um, ultimately here now it is sort of like creating a little bit of a paper introduction so that we can get an idea of all of the different sorts of uh you know topics that should be included in this idea now you can see here that we've got awesome actually really awesome um sort of like uh, equations which i really like i've not seen anything like this before and you'll see how well it does with that in a minute when we talk about actually just writing literature reviews and peer review papers. Oh, that one's a little bit controversial. Can you trust AI to write an entire peer reviewed paper? We're about to find out. So another thing that Gatsby offers is this, the Gatsby Writer. And here it says, I can help you write a paper manuscript or a patent disclosure, which is very important, especially in my field, the material science world, where you want to protect your intellectual property and maybe become a millionaire from your ideas. It's never happened to me yet. Oh, sad face. All right then, so um, here you can input or attach your existing materials and it will write a paper. Now, I put in essentially a draft of a paper that I was uh, working on many years ago. And this is what happened. So this is where I was pretty, pretty uh, excited with what it created. Now, I actually put in my paper. So this is what I put in. It was a draft of a paper that I was writing. And I wanted to know, could it extract the information from the document I put in? And it only accepts Word documents up to five megabytes, which in my field isn't sort of enough to really put in a full paper. But if you've got some ideas in like a Word document, you can put it in here and then it will create an actual manuscript for you. So here you can see, okay, I put that in and then before, before diving into writing your paper manuscript or patent disclosure, I'll first summarize the research you've done so far. So based on the document I uploaded, this is what it says I did. And that's exactly what I did. So I was happy with that. And then I can click here and click research, word count, how many words I want, and then write a paper manuscript based on that. So I can click write a paper manuscript and this is what it generated. So this isn't uh, you know real time, it took ages to create this, but ultimately look, it says here, fabrication and optimization of that. It's got an abstract, which is pretty good. It's got an introduction, which is fully referenced and sort of like cited, which I really like. Um, and you know, remember we've just uploaded one Word document and this is what it's created and it is is um, a pretty good first start as a peer reviewed paper. And this is the most controversial thing in academia at the moment, the done for you peer reviewed papers. And uh, just by putting in a bit of information, you can get this first draft, which in my opinion is actually not just a first draft. It is very, very detailed. You can see that not only does it sort of like go into silver based uh, electrodes and it's got different types of uh, references here and how they're used. We got carbon nanotube based, we've got hybrid, electrodes here you can see you know it's referenced these things and then we've got fundamentals here dispersibility so it's got dispersibility basic it goes really really detailed and into the equations and into the kind of like um, the the interaction mechanisms and into all of the sort of like really fundamental things that you would like to see in a paper but I think this maybe goes a little bit too deep for my field but it's good to have the option of having those really sort of like grand granular bits of information in a paper. And then here it's got enhanced dispersibility. So this is how I actually modified the single ward carbon nan nanotubes. Then it's got this bundle size distribution formula. Um, and then here it's got other things. So you can see it really, really goes from sort of basics. And then it's pulled out the figures that I used to uh, create my paper in that paper draft. So here it's saying patterned uh, transparent electrodes on glass substrates. Well, no, that's not what it is. It's not on glass substrates. This was um, just uh, free floating in acetone to see the structural stability. So yeah, that didn't really sort of work. But one thing it does do down here is give you the ability to know what should be in there. Now, this graph is wrong. It's just wrong. It just doesn't make sense. This chart 
it, I, I don't know where it's got the information, but it at least tells me that I should be sort of like plotting sheet resistance against weight fraction. So I like the idea of using this as a tool to work out, you know, based on the current work you've done, what you should actually be including to create a full paper story. And that's what this is really doing for you is helping you sort of like determine what is a full complete story that you could tell about your research. So here, look, I don't know where I got this data. It, I just made it up. I really, it's confusing. It's not right. But here we've got wavelength versus optical transmittance. So I should have, you know, um, the UV spectra in here probably, UV vis spectra. Then it's got a nice kind of like equation and I could see if that's use, use, uh, useful for my research. Then we've got mechanical testing. So 10,000 bend cycles, which it needs, it says like, you know, if you're gonna include something like this, other papers have got bend cycles, so you should include that. Then we've got um, time-lapse stability in acetone flotation test, that makes no sense. Um, but ultimately, you know, this is the sort of story you should be telling in your paper and it's done all of the sort of like hard work for you where it's created um, an introduction, it's created an abstract, it's got all the references. We've got, uh, let's have a look, 38 references, which is great for a paper in my field. Um, and they all exist. So if you click here, it actually takes you out to the oh, security check required. All right, all right. But yeah, you can click on those and it takes you out to all of the really awesome places uh, that you can get this information. Let's try another one just to make sure we don't get a security check. Here it is nanoscale here's the paper so yeah overall i think this is really one of the first tools that allows you to get a full story of your research into a paper format that is a great place to build off so congratulations gatsby you've done it i think this is now the leading edge of paper writing for academics. Try it for your research. Let me know how good it is for your field because my suspicion is that it's not good all the time. Anyway, there's something else you need to know about this. The last thing Gatsby can help you with is reviewer, and this is where you get systematic literature reviews on any topic that you want. So here, when you click on the reviewer, it just says, I can help you write a systematic literature review and a meta-analysis if needed. Oh, thank you. Just enter your research topic below. So here you've got options. You can click meta-analysis. You can say since a certain time. You can see it goes all the way back to 2000. Um, you can leave those off and just put a research topic, which is uh, what I did. And then this is what I ended up with. And it does take a while to generate, but it's easy because you just wait. It, you know, you just go grab yourself a cup of tea or something like that. So here I wanted a literature review on nanocomposite transparent electrode materials. Then it says we'll start by generating an outline. And then after you're happy with that, you click view, uh, you know, create paper manuscript. So it creates kind of this outline. You think, oh, yeah, you know, you can scan over it and be like, yeah, OK, I like that. And then, uh, yeah, ultimately, then it creates this for you. So let's go all the way to the top. And it is very, very detailed and very, very advanced. One of the best literature reviews that I've seen generated specifically in sort of like the research um, AI tool world. This is it, advances in nanocomposite transparent electrode materials, and uh, it's got a, an introduction, it's all reference, there's methodology. And here is the Prisma sort of flow diagram of all of the studies that it included. And the final review included 13 studies. So out of 2000 and something studies, it only chose 13. Now, am I happy about that? Not really, I feel like there are more sort of papers that if I was to do this manually that I'd find. I've done this literature review in the past and found many more than 13 papers. Um, but ultimately you can see here that's obvious because it says research trends. And then in 19, uh, 2019, it just found one paper. Now I know that's not true. So it really didn't sort of like find the perfect papers and it really didn't find all of the papers in this but nonetheless uh, you know I think it gives you a good structure of a literature review and uh, fully referenced and if we scroll all the way down to the bottom you can see that it found 31 references that included in the end despite it saying it only used 13. Nonetheless uh, I think this would be a good start for you. I think other 
tools do research um, literature reviews better at the moment but uh, if you've paid for this and you've got it if i was to start a new research um you know uh, uh field i would use this if i've already got access to it for the writer which i feel like is probably the most powerful tool that this is offering at the moment and the good thing is is once you've created something like this you know the manuscript you can go in and it gives you other options like humanizing so here you can say humanize reduce ai detection likelihood and that's where you use these credits up here um, or you can export it to markdown latex ms word all of the places where you would want to actually sort of like start working with this you don't have to just use it in the format it's giving you in the you know the tool or the web interface it is completely exportable which i love so gatsby Oh, it's exciting times, isn't it? This is the first most controversial area, which is paper writing done for you. Oh, watch this space. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about how Illicit just got awesome and can write literature reviews for you. Go check it out.